Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. All right, so hey, we're getting into wines I haven't tasted yet. Outstanding. All right, okay, great. All right, so, um, <laughs> that's a complete inside joke and wasn't even in the right usage. But anyway, um, uh, so we're about to head into uh, this episode, next week's episode, wines I did not try a couple a couple days ago, so that's great. So just because this is a screw cap uh, wine. All right, so um, again, another wine that was donated to me. Now this is um, this is someone who's kind of been going, hey man, I sent you a sample. Have you even tried it yet? So I do apologize again for the length of time it took to do this particular review, um, but. I'm looking forward to checking it out and hopefully this will be um, worth the wait. All right, um, so this is, well, this is the non-vintage Bodegas Eranzo Spartico blend. It is a 50-50 blend of Tempranillo and Cabernet Sauvignon. Suggested retail price is $11. Uh, I'll go through kind of like a little historical thing real quick about the winery. Um, references are to be found to the surnames Eranzo and Perez Duque in the district of Utiel Requena. Is it Requena? I don't see a tilde. How about over here? How about Utiel Requena? Because even on the bottle it doesn't have the little tilde. But maybe, I don't know, maybe in the dialect you don't need it. Um, soon after the conquest of the area from the Moors by King Fernando III of Castile in the 13th century. 1429, the Aranzo family received a grant of nobility from King Juan II of Castile. Uh, in 18, I'm sorry, in 1646, Don Pedro uh, Uste Aranzo received letters, I guess, of patent or letters patent from King Philip IV of Habsburg, appointing him High Sheriff of the town of Utiel with the right to bear arms. Uh, on the Perez Duque family, Enrique Herrero y Morales' history of Requena, uh, written in 1890, describing the medieval blazoned houses in the old city, says, that of the palace of Fernando Perez Duque, as it is known, whose lords are descended from the first settler knights. Uh, the present house of Aranzo Perez Duque family in Requena was built in 1794 and is classified as a cultural heritage site by the Valencia Regional Government. So that is where uh, they are from, Valencia, Spain. If you don't know where Valencia, Spain is, um, it is on the east coast of Spain. It's not quite due east of uh, Madrid. It's east and then a little bit south. Um, this is a USDA certified organic wine. Uh, it says non-GMO project certified, so we can remove that now. That, that way I don't have to worry about not mentioning that stuff. Um, there is some things you have to do to say that USDA organic, I don't remember everything off the top of my head, but um, we will talk about this location on the back white label. Um, it says uh, grown in the hills just west of the Mediterranean coast near Valencia. Um, the rest of it's like just, you know, tasting notes and yada, yada, yada. Uh, it is imported by Natural Merchants Incorporated in Oregon. Um, also, why is it called Spartico? Let me pull up those notes real quick. Um, blah, 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 blah. I got to get through this. Oh, uh, talking about certified organic wine. Um, all wines in Natural Merchants catalog are made with organically grown grapes, but most have a small amount of sulfites. Wines labeled as certified organic contain no added sulfites. 
the wine will probably have sulfites. So real quick sidetrack. So the amount of sulfites in a wine naturally or even added to help preserve the wine or prevent any other fermentation is less than what's in typically dried fruit. If you like dried fruit and you don't get headaches, then it's not the sulfites. All right. Um, and I know that's somewhat controversial. People claim sulfites give you headaches. It's not the sulfites. All right. There are other food products that you probably eat that have 10, 100,000 times the sulfites in them and you don't get headaches from those. You probably just drank too much alcohol or you have a low tolerance and that's why you have a headache. Um, or other impurities or other things. All right, it's not the sulfites. Okay, um, yada, yada, yada. Bodegas Eranzo has developed a proprietary method to ensure the wine's stability without the use of sulfites in production. Um, let's see. The name Spartico and the label design, this part right here, um, are derived from the word esparto or esparto grass. For centuries, esparto grass has grown alongside Spain's vineyards, providing various forms of life sustenance, woven tapestry, coverings, papers. For the grower family, Spartaco wine celebrates the venerable union of terroir and man, uh, a biodiversity between Esparato and Spaniards that has lasted through the ages. La, la, la. Okay, so, excuse me on that. Oops, let's quit that, don't need it anymore. All right, so let's get into the wine. All right, so I, I don't know the last time I had an organic wine. I don't remember, and I don't know if I've even had an actual organic wine. I've had, I know I've had plenty of sustainably farmed uh, or wines that are from sustainably farmed uh, vineyards. I've had biodynamic. I even visited uh, Benziger and uh, Chateau von Roque that are 100% biodynamic. So um, I've had those for sure, and I enjoyed them. Um, Organic, I'm not really sure. This is not a natural wine. It's just that it's an organic wine, okay? And organic doesn't necessarily mean superior in any way. It just means they're trying to not uh, use chemicals to do pesticides, fung fungicides, or adding any extra sulfites for our certified organic um, to preserve the wine. Trying to allow the wine to be as, I don't want to say pure, but you know, allow, allow the grapes to speak for themselves with, uh, from the land and all that. And, you know, hey, pesticides, insecticides, they're the reason we even have the, the food, the quantity of food that we have that we still can't get out to everybody who needs it. But, um, so it's not all bad. But I'd say if we can avoid using it in certain cases, it'd be great. All right, on the nose... Tempranillo cat blend, huh? On the nose, red fruits. Almost like a red cola. Not red cola like strawberry big red, but like red fruits, but a cola, like, like maybe a raspberry cola. I said it was $11, right? Suggested retail price. I know the lower third said it. There's some other aroma. Not a bad aroma. I just can't pinpoint uh, exactly what it is. Let's check it out. It's dry, um, not overly dry, not huge tannins. There's a you know definitely some dryness on the lips, not the lips on the gums. Um, not as dry as what was that the uh, um, what's we call it? Not I want to say Trollado, the Terranol, uh red wine from a couple weeks ago from, from a couple episodes ago. Not as dry as that. 
there is kind of a bitterness to it. I feel like I got it like a bit of a nice you know, licorice, real, just a fleeting hint of that. Um, brambly, definitely brambly. I feel like I kind of bit into some bark. Um, again, red fruits, I wouldn't say anything necessarily too specific. You might, it might be like raspberry type of fruit. Um, but yeah, it's, it's like kind of woodsy, brambly. Um, not necessarily forest floor, but there's there's a there's a minerality or earthiness to it, um, but it's like coated with the fruit, or the fruit coats that. Do I like the wine personally? Not really. Um, is it a poorly made wine? I don't think it's a poorly made wine. Uh, it's $11 wine. I think it's at the right price point for what it is. Um, it's not my style. It's not a wine that I'm going to necessarily mean. And, and here's what sucks, because I've had some wines I've said I don't really like, and then, well, this is a screw cap, so I'm probably going to have to drink it quick. But like the ones at Corvin, I've had them two, three, four months later, and I'm like, man, I don't really remember liking this wine a whole lot, but now I dig it. This could be one of those wines where, especially, you know, I know it'd be vacuum vend and I'll probably put it in the fridge to help preserve it even longer. But this might be a wine that I'll probably, I might like on a, on a second tasting. You know what I'm gonna do? We're gonna dump this and we're gonna pour it again. Huh, got a little eyelash inside my, uh, inside my glass. Because, you know, lots of times, especially when, you know, old school pulling corks, first sip isn't always the best sip, which sucks because that's how we determine whether the wine is good or not, right? But what we're really determining is the wine sound. Not do we like the wine, not does it taste good, but does it not taste bad? Like, it's not faulted. That's what we're tasting. That's what we're testing, okay? But wines usually are good enough on the first taste that you're okay, that's good. Um, but it's usually the second taste, the second pour of the bottle. That's that's really the determination, determining factor for me sometimes. So that bitterness, that woodsy, like I bit into a bark, isn't as prominent now. It's still there, it's still a little bit there, but it's not like, oh, I just gotta, you know, all that all that up in your grill, right? Um, there's definitely uh, still the red fruit character. I, I'm gonna call it raspberry. Um, does it have, has it dramatically changed enough for me to go, wow, I love this wine? No. Um, Again, if this is a style of wine that you like, then you're gonna love it. Um, I, I will equate it to, it kind of tastes like an $11 bottle of California Red Blend. Um, so it, it, you know, it's, it's appropriately priced for what it is. Uh, if this is the style of wine you like, then go for it. This is, you know, you're, you're not gonna be disappointed with it. If you're wanting something a little bit more, if you're if you're expecting an $11 bottle of wine from no matter where to deliver like a $30 bottle of wine, tell me when you find that bottle and I will be more than happy to review that. But you know, it's an $11 bottle of wine. It's not bad. But it's just not my prefer. It's not my preference. Now, with all that said, if I had some food with this, I highly think, I highly suspect that this wine will get better. Will get dramatically better. Um, I think this is a wine that absolutely has to have food with it to really enjoy it. Um, I just think it needs something to counteract 
the flavors. Um, you know, the obvious, you know, steaks and all that, but I really think if you had a smoked meat or a barbecue, the fruit will help with that savoriness on uh, that smokiness of, of those types of grilled meats, uh, or basted meats. Um, so I think, I think if I was going to have like some brisket, some barbecue, some sausage, um, or, or a nice grilled steak. Uh, I think I would enjoy this wine a lot more. It, to me, it's kind of like, it's just something missing and I think it's the food. And uh, I mean, I've had wines like this and have them with food and I'm like, this wine is really good. Or I really enjoy the wine at least. But other than that, it's, it's typically not my style of wine, but listen to the comments of, of critics or opinionators or whatever and that's what you go by that's why i don't give scores anymore because scores are bs they're just an, they're just an arbitrary number what's the difference between a freaking 93 and a 94 or a 98 99 or 100 what really is the difference on that can you quantify those individual points can i quantify the difference between 89 and a 90 because 90 is that magical number that oh Wine's a 90 pointer, but it's not, but if it's 89, oh, it's horrible. Like I'm not going to spend 40 bucks on $89. I mean an 89 point wine, but if it's $90, pff, dude, where, where do I, where, where do I write the blank check to? You okay. So that's why I do, I go by recommend, don't recommend, highly recommend run away, you know, whatever I, terms I want to use. Um, and then also explain whether it's part of my style, if I like it just personally or not. If, it's, if it appeals to what I like in wine, then there you go. All right, so done with the soapbox. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, leave comments below, uh, either at the website or on YouTube. Uh, leave me a five-star rating on iTunes. That's very helpful in people finding the show. Um, or if you watch on TiVo, I, see, I, I assume you can watch on TiVo. Uh, if you're watching on Roku, on the iFood or iWine uh, app, that is awesome. Uh, or all the other outlets you're watching on the podcast, watching your Apple TV. However, actually, I'm on Google Play now. I, I haven't seen statistics yet for that. Um, I'm not even sure if the feed is, is the feed that's going to it. So it'd be kind of interesting to see how Google Play comes out. All right. So that's going to do it uh, for this episode. Uh, again, comments below, blah, blah, blah. Um, you can click the links above to friend me up. I uh, just realized it may still be another month or so before I see those requests. And uh, you can send me some ducats there uh, via PayPal. And we'll see everyone again next time.